Okay. Hi, everyone. Welcome to today's bite sized talk. Today, we have Chris Wyatt, who's going to be telling us about Gitpod and how it can be used for testing, development, and training. Um, I'll let Chris introduce himself, um, but I hope you enjoy the talk. Hi, everyone. Um, yeah, so my name is Chris. Um, I work at a uh, postdoc at uh, University College London, and I also help with uh, the training materials at Sakara Labs. And this is particularly where Gitpod, so this um, basically a miniature computer in the cloud that we can use for development um, is really handy specifically for training, um, but it is also now used really frequently within the NFCore community to test code and to make changes and use the, all the Git features of Gitpod, um, of GitHub, I mean, uh, within this, this really nice environment that we can all use. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, what is Gitpod? Um, so it's an open source developer platform that's using VS Code and it can spin up these these miniature development environments in seconds from a Git repository um, with all the code you need so that you can actually do all the testing or whatever you need to do in your particular um, piece of code. Um, and it's free to use, and I'll get to more details of that later. Um, and all the prerequisites you need are actually just a Chromium-based browser, an internet connection, and a GitHub account. So you will need to sign in using your GitHub account to get access to the Gitpod environment. Um, so just to, just a bit overview of what I'm going to talk about today, I'll explain why you get pause reviews, um, how you actually get started, which is a very simple setup, uh, and then we'll get straight into running an NFCore test pipeline. Uh, then we'll go into slightly more like deeper topics that are maybe more for developers of NFCore code, um, which is editing uh, NFCore pipelines, dealing with GitHub and how to push some quarter branches, for example, um, setting up these whole GitHub environments, and live rendering of um, HTML and, and to do things with the website. It's also a really useful task that we use at NFCore. Um, so yeah, why are we using Gitpod? It, well, it's this really cool, it's the kind of ethos of Nextflow, the fact that at uh, NFCore that you have these repeatable and reproducible um, pieces of code, but now we also have a way of testing them in the exact same environment between all the collaborators of a particular NFCore pipeline. Um, and it also helps just simplify a lot of the tasks that we're doing when we're, we're coding with these particular pipelines. And it's really fast. Um, there are other different types of uh, environment like this other than Gitpod, but Gitpod's super fast. And normally you can just go straight from um, a GitHub repository to this kind of um, VS code window where you have a terminal, all your code and, and a very, really, really nice, neat way of, of dealing with all your work. Um, <clears throat> So yeah, to get started, um, we may as well just dive in so that we can show exactly how this works. Um, so yeah, if you want to do this at another time, I think maybe it might be difficult to do it as well at the same time, but if you want to, then go ahead. Um, but all you need is the browser uh, and your GitHub uh, credentials. And to actually open any uh, GitHub URL as a Gitpod environment, then you just need to add this prefix um, that's shown here before the GitHub repository URL, um, or you can install a Gitpod browser extension. So um, I will put all these in the notes afterwards, um, but you can download this extension and it will basically add a Gitpod button, a green button to every Git repository. And all it's doing is just making this prefix before the URL so that you can quickly access with one click, especially if you're already logged in with your GitHub credentials then it will be one click and you'll get straight into the working repository. Um, and finally, I just wanted to mention that this is actually being done uh, through a file in the Git repository called a git.gitpod.yaml file. And this is the file that tells um, Gitpod what particular pieces of um, uh, code that we need and how to set up that environment so that the particular code that we're interested in works. So yeah, so we're going to just go straight into the live demo. So I'll explain exactly what it looks like when we, when we go into this environment, um, how you can add extensions into these environments. So you can add different add-ons. This is a picture from Gitpod. You can add Docker, or you can add lots of different functionality within your containerized environments to test your code. Uh, I will explain how to use Git um, within this, and also opening files like PDFs, et cetera, and live rendering for website development. So what we're going to do now is um, we're just going to take, um, oh, sorry, <laughs> skipping ahead. We're just going to go straight into how to use Gitpod. So hopefully everyone can see this. 
So if you, the, the example pipeline we're gonna use is the NF core test pipeline. Um, I've already got the browser extension, so I actually have this link already. Um, I could also copy the link address, um, open up a new tab and just paste it in. Um, but I, I, well, just for quick for speed, I'll just click on it. Um, so when you log in, this is all, it, all, all you need to do. And at this point, it would ask you for your credentials. So for me, it's not because I'm already um, already logged in. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, so this is going straight from that repository um, into now we're in Gitpod. Um, and along on the other side, you can see the Explorer. So it says these are all the files within your repository. You have a window here to look at uh, visualization of, of code or of PDFs, et cetera. And then you have a terminal at the bottom. Um, you also have, um, we should have extra buttons here, which I can't see. Anyway, well, there's, there, there's, there's all the things you would normally want to do on your own computer, you can also do here. Um, and just to show you how this is actually working, uh, the gitpod.yaml file um, is not, <laughs> did I click the right one? But I'll go back. So this, this particular repository, our in the master. So some pipelines, this is a very good example uh, to show you. You need to, when you're looking for a pipeline to, to look with running with Gitpod, you need to make sure it's got this gitpod.yaml file um, because this is all the programs you need. If we click on that, um, it's showing that we have an image, so a Docker file um, from Docker Hub, an image is being pulled that has all the, the code that we need. And I will go a bit more into these Gitpod YAMLs a bit later. Um, so we need to be in this development branch. Um, I also mentioned at this point, if you're actually um, making changes to NF core code, then you'll be wanting to do this in the dev branch and not on the master branch. So now if we click it, <laughs> we should get back to a Gitpod environment that I was expecting. Uh, that should have all the code that we need to run this particular pipeline. So sometimes this can take a few few seconds. Um, probably it's a live demo, so probably it will be <laughs> more than that. Um, but if not, we can move on to uh, different other things that I can explain to you, but it should pop up reasonably fast. It won't now, will it? Okay, there we go. So, <laughs> so now we are actually in the, the correct uh, the correct um, repository that I wanted to be in. I'll just move that out of the way just to make it clearer. So now you can see there's a git pod YAML file, which I was expecting to see, which has, this is the reason why we have the code brought into this environment. And then in the terminal now, if we type in next flow, it finds the tool because it's already installed within this git pod YAML file. It's told us that this container contains all the things we need to run the particular piece of code. Um, so the other thing that's quite nice here, if you want to actually test this repository, there's obviously the readme. If we open this, this is not obviously rendered. Um, there's a preview button so we can easily click things to preview the render to look exactly the same as it would do on the web page. Um, it also tracks. So if you're, if you're actually needing to change something like in the readme, you can, you can add whatever you want and it will automatically change it in the preview on the right hand side. Um, but I'm not going to change this at the moment. Um, I just need to get rid of that. Anyway, if I move this across. So if we look at the, the readme, it tells us obviously how we can run this piece of code. And I just want to quickly show you that obviously it's quite easy to quickly run this particular piece of code. So we're gonna run Nextflow. Um, and remember this is actually in a dev, the dev branch. So if we run it exactly the same as this line, we would actually pull the master branch, which is not actually what we need to run. So obviously with Nextflow, we can just run from the main.nf file. Uh, then we can set a profile. Um, and here it explains how to set the profile as, as normal with Nextflow code. And in this particular case, we're gonna use Docker. The reason for this is that Singularity is one of the few things that I know that doesn't work in Gitpod. So if you need to test something with Singularity, you'd have to do it outside. You wouldn't be able to do it within this environment. Uh, then we could set an out div. So everything you need to do here is very simple to do. Okay, so if you want to add a new folder, we could call it results. And this is the kind of way you can add a folder manually by clicking one of these buttons for new files or new folders. And then we can just run the code like this. So now we're running Nextflow and running this, this um, pipeline. 
within Gitpod. Um, so I hope you can see it's, it's, you know, it's quite nice that we could quickly get to running this pipeline and seeing how it works and begin to see the output. Um, the resources on these machines aren't um, huge. There's only a few threads, um, so you can't do anything that's going to be using like eight threads, for example. Um, and they only run for maximum half an hour if you have the free account. Um, but we'll explain later there's an access that you can get in limited time um, if, you, if you need that for your particular project. Um, so yeah, if we just see that the program is running and we see obviously all the tasks next to are running through, um, we can then, I'll just wait for it to finish. Shouldn't take too long. This, this pipeline for, I should have mentioned, um, is actually taking uh, FASTQ reads, it's running it through FASTQC to get color control of those particular samples, and it's using MultiQC to push them all together to make a really nice uh, plot of all the, the different features, uh, the quality scores of the FASTQ reads. So this is kind of a quick way of running a pipeline, um, and you can do this for any of the NFCOR pipelines that have this Gitpod YAML. Um, and it's quite fun to do because it means you can just really test out a new pipeline and see exactly how it works and see if it works with your data. You can drop and drag your files into this explorer area to bring files in. Um, there's also um, other ways of, uh, that you, th there's also normally here, there, there'll be a file in store. I don't know why it's not here. Might be because I'm doing full screen. But anyway, you can drop and drag files in here. Uh, I'll just take that off just to see if I can find it. Oh, yeah, here we go. Sorry, if I have the outside full screen, you have options here that you can save files to your local machine. Um, you can open files and do all the kind of things you would expect to do in a normal um, computer. Um, the other thing, so now it's finished. Uh, in our results file, we have our results. Uh, and if we look in MultiQC, for example, we have the MultiQC report. And again, you can use these preview buttons so that you can render uh, these particular results into a nice file that you can see everything that's going on. So here is the results of that um, FASTQC result in MultiQC. Um, so I think this is quite cool, you know, that you can, you can just quickly run these pipelines. Also, within this, this particular um, environment, you might want to change something. So maybe you, you're particularly interested in changing a particular module. Um, you can still change everything uh, in a Gitpod environment. And once you change something, uh, I'll just add, I won't actually push this to the branch because people won't be happy. But if I add on, say, um, I don't know, cats, I don't, whatever I've changed here, if I'm changing the code here, you'll notice that on the left-hand side on the source control, it's noticed that one of the files within your repository has changed. And if we click this button, it said that we've changed the main.nf and you can now use the git functions within Gitpod to add that particular change. And you can also then make a message for that particular change. And also down the bottom, you can see that we have this development branch on the bottom left-hand side. Um, if we click this, we can also choose to create a new branch. So if you've made changes to the code, this is a very quick way to add, create a new branch and show that, that you know, so that we can push it to the, um, push it back to the repository and then do a pull request. So I think that's everything I really wanted to show you on this very basic example. Um, so I'm going to quickly go to another example that I think is quite helpful to explore, um, which is actually on the website. So if I go to the website um, uh, the repository, we can also run it from here. And I'll just show a few more features that I think are really interesting to, to see. But we can actually live render the whole website. And, and show that the, the whole website is changing and we can change the underlying markdown. Um, so this is quite helpful when we've been developing the website. So I'll, hopefully this will quickly load and I can show you this example. So I will show you in this repository that if we see the gitpod.yaml file, this is what I showed you before that you have, um, well, there's many things you can put in these YAML files, and I think the best way to learn about this is to go to the gitpod.io website, but also just looking at other people's uh, gitpod YAML files, you can see exactly what people are doing. So before I showed you image, image was pulling a Docker container, but you also can uh, initiate tasks. Um, so this is, so you can do lots of different relations, to, um, uh, commands related to Docker. You can open ports to expose ports so that we can look at web browser and share, share a particular web browser 
um, HTML rendering. Uh, and the other thing are the VS Code extensions. So these extensions are all on over here. And you can make sure that each repository that you make into a Gitpod um, environment has um, all the different code, uh, linting services, um, adding different particular pieces of code that are very useful to have each time. You can add these extensions manually in this Gitpod YAML. Um, and you can also set all the GitHub um, uh, settings that you would need to change. Um, so just very quickly, because I know I'm probably running over time, um, we can we can set here in the remote browser, we can set this to um, being a live preview. Okay, no, you can't. Um, probably I've done something wrong. There we go. So yeah, so with, within this repository, we're now making a live view of the actual repository that's changed. And then if I wanted to go through the code into the markdown, I can actually change the markdown. And like I showed you before, you can actually change uh, what's happening in this live preview of the NFCore website. But I think this is super useful as well. The only last thing I wanted to show you was um, with the GitHub button here, you can look at all the open pull requests. Um, you can click on different ones that you're interested in trying to fix. Um, I'll get rid of this for now. And it should show you the pull request and give you all the information if it loads, hopefully it will. But anyway, normally it should, you should come up with all the things you can do on Git, basically you can do within this Git pod environment. And I think this is really handy. So there we go. So you can assign, you can do everything that you want to do in Git, but it's within this GitHub repository. And I think this is really helpful. So I think finally, I think I showed everything I needed to show there. Um, I just wanted to mention here, very, is there only a few slides left. So I wanted to mention that also these Gitpod environments are used as extensively the training. So Satish uh, presented really well the, the training materials that we have two weeks ago. All of these repositories um, are now running a Gitpod environment with all the, the, the code that you need to run them. So if you're new to Nextflow, this is a really cool way of getting into Gitpod and into Nextflow that you can have this amazing environment in the cloud with all the tools that you need. Um, uh, the cost. The free one's really cool. It's only 50 hours per month. You have uh, four parallel workspaces, but you have this 30 minute inactivity time. Uh, as a member of NF Core GitPod, uh, GitHub uh, accounts, you can find a free professional open source account uh, and you can get this through the following link. So if you click this, uh, there's a, I think the form you need to fill in to be able to get a professional account uh, for free, uh, which is really nice of GitPod to, for open source developers. Um, and yeah, just to say there's not very many threads and I think the maximum size of each repository is about 30 to 50 gigabytes in case you're testing and you need more than that. But normally it's the resources are easily enough to do all these different testing things that we want to do. Yeah, so finally, just to say if you need help, um, there's lots of people in NFCore that work with um, Gitpod and have lots of knowledge of how to run all these things, how to make the YAMLs, for example. Um, and there's also a section on the web page relating to Gitpod. Um, and there's a really great resources and, and videos on Gitpod IO itself. Um, so yeah, I think that's that's everything. Thanks for listening. Thanks, Chris. That was a really fantastic talk um, and really exciting to to hear a bit more about Gitpod again. Um, are there any questions? Um, so the options are to either put your questions into the chat and I can read them out, or I will just unmute the microphones so um, you should be able to um, speak up yourself yeah security issues um personally i really i really don't know i yeah i i, I would have to check that up for you um yeah i don't know about if, if it's how, how what, what level of security they have yeah, I would say for all of the stuff to do with NF Core, there's basically no security issues. It's public code running on a public True. server. So don't, if you want to do something secret on a private repo, then maybe consider that. But for NF Core stuff, I don't think you need to worry. It's completely off your system. So it's more secure than if you were running it locally. <laughs> True. And oh, someone and asked, another... oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, sorry, I was just going to read out the question. Um, yeah, what are the pros and cons of Gitpod compared to Codespaces? 
Yeah, so this is a good point. I mean, we did play around with a few of these different things, but um, Gitpod is super fast. It's, it's done, I think it's powered by Kubernetes and it's, it's done in a much more efficient way. And it means that everything's really quick and you have these initialization steps. The reason it's quick is because it actually saves these layers of your of these Gitpod environments so that you don't have to keep uh, installing everything at the same time. So that's why it's like a second, you know, a few seconds normally to get to these things. So it's mainly for speed. And also they're a really great company that seem to be really, they have a really active community of people that help you with your code. So it's, yeah, that's the main reason. And the next question is, is there a way to put a link on a document to open it in Gitpod that automatically takes the current branch into account? I assume so. <laughs> um, I'd have to check that again. I'm not sure. Uh, I'd have to try it. But yeah, I, I think it, it must be it must be possible. I just didn't didn't share that. Um, oh, yeah, I was meant to share the links. <laughs> so I'm just yeah. going to quickly. You can, you can just prefix the uh, the file link with the git pod io thing. perfect thanks thanks Mash. cool yeah, it, take, it takes into account your entire current url so if the current url you're looking at is on a branch you've got to open git pod in that branch um, and the same with the little green git pod button also <clears throat> most of the repos we have uh, well, a lot of them now uh, when you open a pull request, uh, Gitpod has an integration which will automatically add a little button into the bottom of the first um, description of that pull request. So when you're browsing pull requests, you'll also see a button saying opening Gitpod, and that will open you directly into that pull request. Great. Um, so there's another question here. Can you kindly share the links, e.g. the Slack channel link here? Um, Yes, we will make sure um, the links um, are at least on Slack um, and one or two channels to find sure. later. Okay, unless there are any more questions that pop up quickly, um, I just wanted to thank Chris again for his fabulous talk. Um, you can always catch up on this talk again on YouTube. Um, we'll post this uh, very shortly after the talk. Um, and we'd also like to thank the Chan Zuckerberg um, foundation for supporting these talks. Thanks very much. Thanks, guys.